one more chance to cast their ballot in city council races all across the city. As you know, PIX11 continues to be your local election headquarters. We are urging you to get out and vote. Yeah, one race that we're keeping a close eye on is in District 13 in the Bronx, which covers Throgs Neck. City Island, Pelham Bay, and Morris Park. So joining us this morning is Republican primary candidate George Havernick, who is, so thanks so much, George, for joining us this oh, morning. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so you've been a lifelong Bronx resident, uh, very outspoken. What is it that made you decide that you wanted to put your hat, you put your, uh, your name in the hat? Oh, it's a very simple reason. I mean, I just watched around the city how things were changing. And it seemed, especially when you looked at what was going on, to me, the genesis was the change in the city council. It seemed that the city council, which is normally an area position, seemed to become a collective think tank that was shaping many communities and neighborhoods throughout the city, often without the approval of the area residents. Mm. Let me ask you this, because this specific district, right, is uh, heavily Democratic. It has a Democratic stronghold. What makes you think you can break through that and win? Well, it's simple. No matter who we are, no matter our party affiliation, we all strive for certain things. One is a quality of life and a lot of the amenities that go along with a quality of life. And I feel that I have a message that resonates across both aisles because I'm kind of a guy that's not enough. Okay. I'm not Republican enough. I'm not Democratic enough. Okay. But I think I'm enough for the people. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that's causing a lot of controversy in the Bronx is the redevelopment. Um, we had Marjorie Velasquez. She stopped by to talk about the rezoning plan. This is what she had to say, and then we'll see what you had to think about that okay. on the other side of this. The calls that we get in my office from seniors asking for help, right? A lot of displacement because there aren't enough apartments for them and, and housing specifically geared to our seniors, mm -hmm. to our veterans. And so this uh, development that was approved but it's still now in the courts um, we have 100 units for seniors with wraparound mm. services and when we're talking about our veterans it was securing 25 units for our veterans so she's talking about the Bruckner rezoning yes, plan. She is. what do you think of that well we need an hour to talk about that <laughs> we don't have a segment is not long enough but the project itself was disingenuous because the way it's being presented is, is, is simply wrong. I mean, what happened is we have an LD GMA, a low density growth management area that was highly fought for and highly sought back in 2004. And uh, this particular project is going to upzone 34 parcels of land, many without homeowner knowledge. Hmm. And the 10,000 signatures that were gotten on put on Ms. Velasquez's hmm. desk sort of suggest the community was not on board with this project. And I would like to know what area seniors have come to her, because the bottom line is many came to me and were against this. Mm -hmm. So you don't think it should move forward? I think to say blanketly that it should not move forward would be a little short-sighted. We have to look at certain things, and maybe the community, which was not included, should have been included, and maybe this project could be shaped in a way that's palatable to the community, that yet it preserves the LDGMA. Got it. All right, let's talk about public safety, because that's a huge component that's playing out, not only within District 13, but all across the city right now. But when you look at crime overall, how, do you, how would you as a city council member work to better the situation for so many of the constituents, and how do you get the NYPD involved, if at all? Well, crime is what it is today. We see a problem across many, many areas. Now, when you look at it, you can't look at it myopically. You have to look at certain things that have transpired over the, over the years. I mean, circa 2017, you know, the uh, city council did redefine crime. And once that happened, recidivism went up, and that's sort of validated by two town halls that were held in 2018 in our community. Mm -hmm. And that came before the bail reform that's getting all the attention. So basically, the seeds of this problem go predate bail reform. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at that and maybe go in to the, into the council, look at some of these laws and, that were amended, such as criminal justice reform, nuisance abatement acts, and then maybe do a little tweaking there and work onward and see. Now, also, the attrition rate in NYPD is quite high. Mm -hmm. Morale is low. We have to call it like it is. And maybe we, we have to get some programs back in place that will restore confidence in NYPD, and you'll have that bi-directional relationship that will be enhanced. Yeah. 
Well, we want to touch on everything before we let you go. What about education? There are a lot of Catholic schools in the Bronx that have closed down. What's your, what, are, what kind of an education initiatives do you plan? I, I you believe in school choice without getting too deep into it because my policies are very, very, very lengthy. I have a lengthy policy written about it. But the point is, right now, with the Catholic schools closing, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. And one thing we have to look at is what is going to replace them. Now, I look in pretty much where I went to school, Our Lady of Assumption closed. We were fortunate enough to get the Earl Monroe Charter Academy in there, which is run by Dan Clores. Mm. And they have a very well-funded group that doesn't put a burden on the taxpayers. In addition, that pro provides services that rival anything. And to tell you the truth, if you had this when you were growing up and going to school, you probably would have took advantage of it. Mm. Uh, all right, George. Well, we are simply out of time here, but we appreciate you being here to share some of your uh, policies as we gear geared towards Election Day. Appreciate you being here, okay? Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, and you guys are great, and thank you for having me. All right.